Okay, here we have um, a map, character map about the characters. You can look back at every name and read the relations together to be very, very beneficial for you. Good morning, Prep 2. I missed you all. How are you today? Let's complete great expectations. Pip kept going to Miss Havisham's house to play around with Stella. Remember Stella? She wasn't her daughter. She wasn't her relative. She was only a girl adopted by her. Stella was still so proud and treating Pip in a rude way as she was raised to break men's hearts. Okay, why she was raised to do that? Who can remember? You know why? Because she was raised by Miss Havisham. Miss Havisham was a woman who was deceived by a man, okay, the man on the day of her wedding, he didn't show up and only sent a letter. So, Miss Havisham wanted her revenge from all men. Miss Havisham one day decided that it was enough for Pip to come to her house and play around. And remember why she wanted a boy like Pip, she wanted to see something different in her house, okay, she asked Pip come the next day with Mr. Joe. Who can remember Joe? Joe, the husband of his sister. Okay? And Joe was so kind, man. An honest man. He came immediately the next day with Pip. And he was so amazed to see such a woman like Miss Havisham. She offered him 25 pounds as a reward for Pip. Okay? And asked him that now he can be his apprentice. Apprentice means what? Worker. To take Pip as a worker into forge, as a blacksmith. Everything seemed so strange to Mr. Joe. Even when she was speaking to him, he was speaking to Pip. He didn't look at her at all. He was so shy and felt worried to speak to her. Whenever she speaks to him, he replies to Pip. Okay? And by the way, Pip was so ashamed because of that. Okay? And after that, Miss Havisham asked Mr. Joe to take Pip and to leave the house. What happened? Do you think that Pip forgot all about Estella? No way. He kept thinking that he wants to have great expectations. He wasn't satisfied about his life now at all. He kept working as apprentice in the forge as a blacksmith, but kept thinking, what if I were, uh, were rich, what, I, what if I can reach Stella? And he told his ideas to his best friend, Biddy. Biddy was a girl in the village. She was a relative to Mr. Wapsle, and she was almost educated. She tried to help the other students, and one of them was Pip. He told Biddy that he wished to be someone different for Stella. But Biddy gave him an advice. She said, Pip, maybe she doesn't deserve all of that effort. You know why Biddy said that? Because Biddy understood from what Pip said that Stella was trying only to insult him and make him feel ashamed. So she didn't think that she was a good girl after all. One day, Pip asked Joe that he wants to go and visit Miss Havisham again to thank her. Actually, his reason was to see Stella. Mr. Joe approved to give him half a day a holiday, but at the same time there was another worker and he's a very uh, important character in the novel, Orlick. Orlick was a fat, lazy, strong man. And he asked the same, I want to have a half day holiday. But when Mrs. Joe heard that, as we knew that the shop was at the same place of the house, she began to scream and say, how dare you ask for a holiday like Pip? Orlick hated Mrs. Joe and said she wants to be everybody masters. Okay? And after that, he told her that if she was his wife, he would kill her simply. Okay, Miss Joe began to scream and forced Mr. Joe to fight Orlick. As we know that Joe was a strong man also, he knocked Orlick down. And by that, Mrs. Joe kept quiet and she didn't say a word. 
When Pip went to Miss Havisham's house, he asked to meet her and then began to wonder where was Stella. Miss Havisham knew immediately that he came for Stella and told him that Stella was abroad now to complete her education as a lady and Miss Havisham was having so much fun then the feeling that Pip was missing Stella and couldn't reach her. Mr. Jaggers, the lawyer, he was a famous one, working for Miss Havisham, one day after four years went to the village pub and there he asked about Mr. Joe, Joe Gagri. He said he was sent by somebody who suggested cancelling Pip's apprenticeship and to offer him great expectations. Of course, the, the first idea came to Pip, oh, she is Miss Havisham, the person who wants to give me great expectations, the person who will give me a fortune. Was he right? Do you think so? Do you think that Miss Havisham would offer anybody, any man, money? Let's know. But what were, what were the conditions for that? Offering him money, education, and to inherit a fortune, but with two conditions. First one, to keep his name as Pip. We said that Charles Dickens wanted Pip, or Philip, to always be called Pip, to keep him as a young child in the reader's eyes. Okay. Then, the second condition that the name will remain a secret until the person himself will choose to tell Pep. Now, second Pep. Pep was so happy to have this a chance, and now he has to leave the village. He said, Joe, Joe, Biddy, everybody, and move to London. Pep will be moved to London, and his teacher will be Matthew Pocket. Can you remember Matthew? Matthew was the person whom Pep see in Miss Havisham's house, okay? We said that Matthew was a relative to Miss Havisham and he was the only person she trusted. Now, Mr. Joe refused any money for leaving Pep and mentioned that he can go freely and when he wishes for him happiness. Now, if we remember anything about Joe, remember that he was simple, kind, honest, friendly man, okay, and at the same time he was so wise, okay, he was so responsible. Joe wasn't caring a lot about money, he didn't care about the position in society, he didn't care that he wasn't educated, he cared only about morals. What are morals? How to behave, okay, how to be a good citizen or a good character. So Joe thought that money wouldn't do any good for him after losing his only son. Actually, he wasn't a son, and we know that, but he considered him as a son and only friend, Pep. Okay, Mr. Joe was sad for leaving his dear son and friend, Pep. Pep asked Biddy to teach Joe to fit with the life in London when he visits Pep. Now Biddy, as a sensible, kind, girl. She, she thought that Pep was so cruel. How come now that he is ashamed from his family? How come now that he wants, wants Joe to be to his level? Wasn't Joe good enough for him now? Maybe he was angry to feel that Pep was ashamed now for Mr. Joe. Mr. Pumperichalk appeared again. Remember him? Last time we saw him in Christmas time when he was uh, dancing while dance after drinking from the bottle of brandy. Remember that? Mr. Pumpelchuk, whose mission only in Christmas was to remind Mrs. Joe how Pip was so, uh, so tiring for her and how he was raised by hand. Now, Mr. Pumpelchuk, after he knew that Pip will have a fortune, began to treat Pip in a very different way. He appeared in the town when Pip went to buy clothes and offered him lunch. Wanted to his advice about a business matter to find a young man, a young gentleman, who would put his money into his business. And he began to speak to Pip about the happy days he used to have during the Christmas. 
Of course, Bib remembered these days weren't happy at all. They were only awful days for him. Pip went to see Miss Havisham last time before travelling to London. Pip, when he went this time to her house, he was still thankful and thought that she was the reason behind his coming happiness. Okay, he thought that she was the person who offered him the fortune. Miss Havisham showed her knowledge that she knew the news that somebody adopted Pip. Okay, and she knew, of course, from her lawyer Jaggers. Mr. Jaggers, Pip left the village sadly, although he was waiting for this a chance. Pip found London ugly place, dirty streets, crowded with people. Matthew Pocket has a son called Herbert. Pip would be staying with his son to start his studies. Okay, Mr. Jaggers, the lawyer, had a clerk called Mr. Wemmick. He was assured dry, the square expressions between 40 and 50 years old. His mouth looked like a post box. Whenever Charles Dickens describes a character, he gives some features to make us feel how did Pep feel about them. Pep felt that Mr. Womick was like a post box uh, which is keeping secrets inside it. Okay, And Pep now was talking to uh, Herbert about his experience when he moved to his rooms and he discovered he was the same boy he had the fight with him in Miss Havisham's house. In chapter 3 there was a part when Pip went once to the Miss Havisham's house and saw a, a pale boy. This boy asked him to fight him as a kind of joke and this boy now turns to be Herbert, the son of Matthew Pocket. Okay. And Herbert told Pip that he went to Miss Havisham to see her, but she didn't like him. If she liked him, she would let him rich and marry Stella. Herbert explained to Pip that he wasn't sad, that he missed the chance as he thought that Stella was proud, rude, hard, and that Miss Havisham brought her up to break men's hearts. Okay, so if we can see that we can find that Herbert's point of view about Stella totally different from from Pip's point of view. Okay, actually Her Herbert can see Stella as as she is in true life. Okay, like a cold a cold doll. Okay, nothing else. Pretty doll. Matthew Pocket was a uh, 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 Miss Havisham's cousin and Stella was adopted by Miss Havisham. Herbert decided to call Pip Handel. Why Handel? It was a piece of music that speaks about blacksmith. Pip reminds Herbert of it. Pip and Herbert, by the way, became very close friends, best friends ever. But now about Miss Havisham. Don't you want to know uh, anything about her family? Remember that we said she was a rich lady. But what about her family? Miss Havisham had a story. She was from a rich family. Her mother died when she was young. Her father then married the cook and had a son by her. This son was a half-brother to Miss Havisham. He was a bad character, didn't inherit much from his father as Miss Havisham. Suddenly what happened? A man appeared and pretended to be in love with Miss Havisham. She used to give him money. Matthew was the only person to warn her, but she was angry and didn't listen to his advice. So Miss Havisham, Miss Havisham, when she fell in love with the man, this man deceived her. What happened? During the day of the wedding, when the day of the wedding came, the guests were invited, the dress, the cake. But the man didn't come, only sent her a letter, and she received that letter at 20 to 9. She stopped her life to this moment, and her half-brother, the groom, disappeared. By the way, many people said that maybe this groom was sent by her half-brother to take money from her and to have revenge from her. Since this day, Miss Havisham decided that everything was over for her, and she waited for the moment when she will die. Herbert also had great expectations, okay, and also wanted to work in insuring ships. 
But now he was just working in counting house and didn't have much money. Mr. Matthew Pocket was staying in the other side of London. Pitt began his lessons with him. He studied hard. He divided his time between Herbert's house and Matthew's house. So, Pip thought that having great expectations means to change his social class from being very poor and uneducated to rich educated man. He didn't think about morals. He didn't think how to develop his character. Only he cared about appearance and social class. There were two other students studying with Pip, Bentley Drummel, and he was a rich, lazy, mean, stupid boy. His family were living in the countryside, and the second one was a startup, and he was pleasant and sensitive boy. They always attended the same lessons with Pip. Okay, Pip used to go to Mr. Wemmick to take money whenever he needed. And by the way, it was very clear that there was a large amount of money waiting for Pep. Mr. Jaggers invited Pep, Herbert, Bentley Drummel, okay, and start up for dinner one day. But Mr. Wemmick warned Pep from the housekeeper, okay, and he said that she was like a wild animal. Which housekeeper? Whom? Whom? The housekeeper in Mr. Jaggers' house. Mr. Jaggers never locked the doors of his house as he was known for all the thieves in London and nobody dares to rob him. This information was said by Mr. Wemmick when he was speaking about Mr. Jaggers. Mr. Jaggers from the important characters in the novel, he was a famous lawyer, very known that nobody dared to steal him or rob him whenever he has got a case he can easily get the criminal out of prison. Many people wanted him to be their lawyer, but he takes only a few cases and he takes a lot of money. Okay, Mr. Wemmick invited Pip to his house first at Walworth, which was a tiny house in the middle of a garden, and introduced him to the aged parent. During the dinner, Mr. Jacker's house, the food was good. The conversation was cheerful, but Mr. Jaggers made the boys show their worst sides of characters. As we know that Herbert, Pep, maybe they have the same character together, but Startup also sensitive and good, but Bentley Drummond was actually a very proud character. Okay? Mr. Jaggers made the boys show their worst sides of characters as he encouraged Bentley to annoy the boys. Okay? Jagger suddenly grabbed the hands of the housekeeper while he was removing the she was removing the dishes and said she was stronger than any gentleman of them. What was the name of the housekeeper Molly? And she was forced to show her rests. During the rest of the dinner, Mr. Jaggers enjoyed watching them quarreling. Pep two, let's continue. One day Joe decided to visit Pep. How Pep knew that there was a letter sent by Betty. We know that Betty was educated somehow. She sent a letter to Pep to tell him that Joe was coming to tell him something important. Once Pep knew that Joe was coming, he wasn't so happy to see him. He was ashamed. He thought that Joe wouldn't fit the life of London. Okay, and he waited to him to come in Herbert's rooms. It was breakfast time when Joe arrived and he tried to behave as a gentleman, but it was so hard. Even when he was using a fork, most of the food was down on the floor, okay, because he couldn't use a fork in a good way. Joe told Pep, I came to tell you that Miss Havisham is telling you Stella came back from abroad, she finished her education, and she would be glad to see you. Okay, Joe told Pep, Pep, I don't fit here in London, I don't fit in this clothes, I'm only fitting in my right place. What was his right place? The forge, the shop, and the village, using his hammer, using his hands. Joe, although he was a very simple man, as I told you before, he was very sensible also, and he knew 
that life wouldn't give everything to him. Okay, now after that, Pip was glad to know that Stella came back from abroad and that he was waiting, waiting anxiously to see Stella again after the years. Okay, okay Pip too. When you went out, that Pip was so anxious to see Stella, he took a coach or a carriage to go from London to her house, to Miss Havisham's house. Okay, when he was on the couch, something strange happened. He saw two prisoners and he recognized one of them. He was the person who gave Pip the two pound notes as a reward. Remember in the village pub and from where? Now he knew that one of the prisoners said it was a reward for Magwitch for helping him. Now we can know the name of the first convict, convict one. Remember the convict, the one, the person that had brought to him fire and food, some, something to drink also? His name was Magwitch. And Magwitch was the person who sent the two pounds for Pep with a stranger. That prisoner didn't recognize Pep because Pep now had a change of the lot. And the prisoner told his friend that Magwitch was sent to Australia. Remember that Magwitch and another convict, his name is Compison, both of them escaped from the prison ship. Okay? When they took them back to the prison ships, what happened? Magwitch was sent to Australia forever, for life, because he tried to escape from the prison ship. What does it mean? If a prisoner tried to escape from a prison ship, actually they banished him to another country, which means he goes there to Australia, he isn't allowed to come back ever to England, and what happened if he came back would be immediately hanged or killed. Okay, now, Kepti, Miss Havisham had a different point of view in love. When Pep went to see Stella now in Miss Havisham's house, of course, Stella was so different. She grown up to be a very beautiful lady. Okay, she changed a lot. And, of course, Pep liked her more and more. What happened? Miss Havisham was so wicked and evil. She wanted Pep to like and love Stella more and more. She told him before leaving her that he has to love Stella. Love Stella even if she wanted him, if she pained him, if she hated him, or even cut him into pieces. According to Miss Havisham, love is only blind devotion. It's giving one's heart and soul to the person he loves. So, Miss Havisham enjoyed, enjoyed every pain he was feeling towards Stella. And Stella warned him, she told him, Okay, Miss Havisham wants us to be together, to spend some time together. But I remem remind you that I have no heart. Don't try with me to fall in love with you. Okay, prep two, prep two. Let's start. What about Herbert's life? He told Pip that he was engaged to a young lady. Her name was Clara. Her mother is dead, and she lives with her father. Herbert and Clara were engaged secretly, which means he didn't tell anybody. Why? Because he didn't have enough money to marry her. After that, in a letter, Stella told Pip that she was coming to London, and that he should wait for her, as Miss Havisham told him before. Pip waited for her and took her to the house where Miss Havisham had arranged for her to stay. So, Stella was going to stay in London for a while in the house. Okay, once again, second prep. What happened to Mrs. Joe? Mrs. Joe had died. Pip was sent a letter by Joe to tell him to come to her burial. We knew that she had an accident, she couldn't speak much, she couldn't move, and Biddy was looking after her. Pip tried to ask what happened to her, he knew that she has been worse than usual, and one evening she asked for Mr. Joe, she put her arms around his neck and laid her head on his shoulder. Once she said sorry, and once she said Pep, then she died one hour later. Okay, second so Pep. Pip asked Biddy, what are you going to do now? 
She told him that she has to leave Mr. Gargery's house, but she would still work as a teacher in the village. He asked her about Orlik. Can we remember Orlik? He was a worker in the forge. She said that he worked for the Savishan for a while, then he left her. Pip offered some money to Biddy, but she refused. Pip thought that he was having a bad influence on Herbert as he was spending a lot of money and Herbert was doing the same like him. Okay, Pep to let's start. Until this moment, you don't know who is the benefactor, the one who gives Pep the fortune. In this one, we are going to discover who is the mysterious person, who turned out to be Pep's benefactor, what great sacrifice did he make for Pep's sake. One day, a stranger came to visit Pep in Herbert's room, and this man was completely strange for Pep. After he entered and began to speak with Pep, Pep wants to know his real personality. And Pep told him that he doesn't know him at all. This person told Pep that he knew him well and he came especially to see him. He came from a long distance, he came from Australia and he came especially for him. And he told him that he knew he had a fortune from somebody. Pep was surprised that this person knew the truth and began to think who was this person. And finally this person was our convict, the first convict, Magwatch. Pep was so surprised and depressed to discover that Miss Havisham wasn't have any relation with his fortune and that Magwitch was the person who offered him the fortune. Pep was so depressed. How come a convict gave him all of this fortune? And Magwitch at the same time was so depressed because he was waiting for this woman to meet Pep. He told him that I considered you as a son. I wanted to make you a gentleman and to be educated. I'm not educated myself, but I wanted you to be different. I spent every money I have on you, and I'm going to leave for you a fortune. Okay, part two. From chapter one, we wanted to know what is the relation between the two convicts? Why one of them wanted to kill the other one? The first one who wanted to kill the other one was Magwitch, and he had got reasons to kill the second one, Combison. Combison was a handsome man and he educated. So, people thought that he was a gentleman and trusted him. Magwitch was a partner in his dirty business. Magwitch was doing the work instead of compassing and signing the papers. They persuaded people to invest their money with them. They used a stolen banknotes. They wrote false checks. Compassing was clever but wicked. He always got the profit while Magwitch took the plane. Although Magwitch wasn't welcomed by Pep in the beginning, but he began to tell his life story to Pep, as he told him his relation with Compassin, he told him also that he came especially for him and he is not going to go back to Australia. That means that his life was in danger. Pep was planning now to get Magwitch out of England. Pep told Miss Havisham that he had found out who is his benefactor was. He told her that he was unhappy with that discovery as she ever wanted and that he would never be rich or important. He blamed her of being unkind to fool him into belief that she was the one to support him with money. Now second Pep, Miss Havisham explained her real feelings towards Pep. Finally, after all the events, she said it clearly. Why should be kind to anybody after all I suffered? We know that Miss Havisham suffered from betrayal from a man. Why should she help another man or a boy? Okay, but Pip had to say two things before he left Miss Havisham and Stella. He told Stella, if you don't love me, you don't have to throw yourself on a dog like Bentley Drummond. Bentley Drummond remembered the student who used to have lessons with Pip, always followed Stella in every place, and Stella showed that she liked him. Stella said that 
What she likes about Bentley drama is that he doesn't expect any feelings from her, and being around with him makes other men jealous. Okay? Bib advised her not to be in a relation with such a man. Something else that Pat told to Miss Havisham that her target was achieved and he will be unhappy forever because he cannot use a money from a criminal. And he used to support Herbert secretly to be a partner in an insuring company. He wanted Miss Havisham to complete supporting the company as he cannot tell Herbert that he was supporting him. And Miss Havisham agreed. Pet and Magwitch, after being a little bit confused from the treatment of each other, Magwitch expecting love and respect, Pip expecting that Magwitch must leave him forever, Pip thought with Herbert that they must make Magwitch go out of England. They had a perfect plan for hiding him. Herbert was in love with a girl called Clara who lived in her, in her father's house beside the river. Herbert arranged to rent rooms for Magwitch there, because it was quite near the open sea. It was far from the center of London and their home, and they would easily take Magwitch abroad by a boat from there. After planning with Herbert how to get Magwitch out from their house to Clara's house beside the river, Pip was going home when he found, with one of the night porter, a letter by Wemmick's handwriting. It was written in this letter, Don't go home. Why Wemmick wrote to him, Don't go home? He requested him not to go home and to be away, okay, as he noticed that he has been watched by a man, and he knew also that Compasson was still alive, and that was a threat for language. From the quarreling that have been doing between both of them, Compasson and Magwitch, all over the years, Compasson now, if he knew that Magwitch came back to England, he would be the reason that he would be caught. And Pep wanted to protect Magwitch from Compasson. Pep was confused and couldn't accept Magwitch's money or refuse it. His feelings were horribly confused. The man who had paid for his education for years was risking his life to see him, but he couldn't like him. In fact, his whole body trembled when he just touched him, but he had to protect him. He went to Stephen Herbert's room after locking all the doors carefully, and he sat weakly down by the fire, tried to make sense of his life. How foolish his dreams had been. Miss Havisham had never intended to make him rich or let him marry Stella. But there was something worse than that. It was this convict, Magwitch, who could be caught and hanged at any moment. That what he did to Joe, he would never, never, never forgive, forgive himself for that. Now... Let's know who was Stella. We said before that Miss Havisham didn't have any children. She adapted Stella. How? One day she asked Mr. Jagger, her lawyer, to bring to her any child to be in the house with her. He brought to her Stella. She was two or three years old. From where did he get her? Let's know the story of Stella. Magwitch was her father and he was married to Molly, her mother, but Molly was so jealous from another woman she thought that Magwitch was in a relation with. She killed the woman and she entered the prison. Okay, after entering the prison, she had Mr. Jagger as her lawyer. He could prove that she didn't kill the woman because she wasn't strong enough and she was out of the prison. After going out of the prison, she disappeared with his daughter Magwitch's daughter and her daughter, who was still she was three years old. After that, Magwitch thought that Molly killed the daughter also, and he complained to the police about that, but there was no sign of Stella again. Now they discovered the whole secret. Stella was the daughter from Magwitch. Magwitch himself doesn't know the information, where is Stella? And Molly also doesn't know where is Stella. 
okay, and still I thought that her parents died long time ago. Okay, Pep 2. Oleg appeared again and wanted to kill Pep. Oleg hated Pep. He thought that he had lost his job at Miss Havisham's house because of him. He thought Pep was in his way since he was a child, and Biggie would have thought about him or liked him if Pep hadn't been there. Pip was saved by Herbert, and Miss Havisham asked Pip to go and meet her. She was sorry for the pain she caused him. Then suddenly, there was a fire in the room. Pip tried to rescue her, and he was badly injured. After that, Miss Havisham died, and left all her fortune for Stella, only four thousands for Matthew Pocket. While we were spending the night at the riverside hub, the owner told them that a boat was watching their boat. In the morning they rode to the center of the river, waiting for a ship to Hamburg. Suddenly a boat came closer very fast, and it was the customs boat. They told them they had a convict who had returned from Australia. Compasson was with them with the officers. They arrested Magwitch and took him to prison. So, Magwitch wasn't saved, okay, and they couldn't get him out of England. He went back to the prison. Okay, Pep 2. Now, after all of these events, let's know the end for every character. Biddy, now, is going to marry Mr. Joe, after the death of Mr. Joe. When Pep went back to the village, Okay, and he wanted to marry Biddy. He found out that it was the wedding day for Joe and Biddy. A little bit he felt annoyed, but after that he said that they deserve each other. What about Stella and Pep? Pep went to visit Miss Havisham's old house after her death, and he found there a beautiful young lady standing in the same garden that they were playing inside it while they were young. And this beautiful lady was Stella, and they decided that they can have another chance or second chance together. What about Magwitch and Compasson? We said that Magwitch was trying to go out of England to Germany, but during this one he was stopped in the water in the river by the boat with officers and Compasson. There was a fight between them inside the boat, and they pulled each other into the water. After a while, Magwitch was up on the water, badly injured, but Compasson disappeared, and likely he died. What about Orlik? Orlik, after trying to kill Pep, he escaped, but after that they arrested him trying to steal from Mr. Pumblechuck's house. So, every character had a certain ending, according to their previous actions.